Welcome everybody to Greedfall 2. I am the Preacher. Episode 0 just happened. This comes from Spiders. They also made Steel Rising, a couple of other games as well. And I am looking forward to this. Some of you may have watched the Episode 0, which is just me looking at the menus. I'm not going to do that again. We're about to hit new game. There is no need for me to do that twice. But I am super grateful that you have come along for the show. I do want to stop for just a moment, pause, and say special thank you to Dead Good Games, to Nacon, and to Spider Studios for the preview code for this very interesting looking RPG. A little bit different than some of the medieval settings that we see in RPGs, or that I'm used to in RPGs. Uh, I never played Greedfall 1, and that is perfectly okay. This game is set three years prior to the events of the first game, which means I can play the first game later when it goes on sale. Anyhow, I feel like a time traveler, so let's head off to, I believe it's Gakan, and we'll find out the story. But uh, I also think decisions actually matter here, and I am looking forward to that. Let's hit new game. I don't know if there's a cutscene. I suspect there is. Let's go get captured. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> See, this is... I. This is as live and unedited as I can make it. Okay, difficulty. <laughs> you are about to embark on a new adventure. You can change the following settings to adjust your experience to your own playing style. If the selected mode does not meet your expectations, you can switch in-game at any time in the options menu. Okay. So, let's go. We have story mode, which is uh, simple. Focus on the story rather than on battles and combat tactics. That doesn't sound fun to me. Adventure. Balanced. Optimize your skills and equipment. Use talents and carefully think out your battles. Okay. Or tactical. Um, I really don't want to focus on tactical aspects of the combat. Maybe I will. We'll play with that perhaps later. The use of pause is highly recommended. And custom. Well, you know what? We're going to go for adventure. Let's take a look at... My goodness, that audio seems awfully loud to me. Let me know if that does, indeed. Let me make an adjustment. Hold on a second. Let's pull that down. That is just a little too aggressive, I think. Okay, back to this. We are... Direct attacks have no effect on your characters, but they can still take damage from effects. Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why would you have untouchable? I can see that being a part of the... Wait. I don't understand why untouchable is a thing. If I hit adventure, untouchable is disabled. If I enable it, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I am a little tired. I have not slept since yesterday morning. So let's go right back to adventure mode. Friendly fire. Your character's skills or AOE spells injure allies if they're caught in the area of effect. Ooh, that is, do I want to enable that? I honestly don't generally love Friendly Fire. I'm tempted to disable that. Let me come back to that here in just a second. No, 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 let's do it. Let's leave Friendly Fire on. Let's, let's go in with the adventure mode. Party damage increases or reduces the damage inflicted by the characters in your party. Guys, I really like this. You can play this the way you want it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play it, I think, just according to the... Um, the way the developers sent it in for adventure mode, I guess, right? Party recovery increases or reduces the health recovered over time by all your characters. Oh, let's leave it like this for just now. I just want to, I just want to leave it. Enemy damage is going to be right at 100. So, all right, we're going to go back to adventure mode. We're going to play it like this. I keep hitting the wrong button. Let's try that again. All right. No need to go back. Let's do a new game. There's your splash screen. That has been the key art they've been sending around. I intentionally avoided this for my thumbnail. Thought I'd try to create my own and probably did a horrible job. So let me know down in the comments below. We're just loading. I don't know what we're loading. But who knows, with all of my um, stats turned way up, be hard looks good if 
you want this portrait to bear any resemblance to you, stop fidgeting. Stand up straight. And turn your head towards me. There. Hold that pose. Figured that was a perfect lead in to character creation. Well, usually character creation is episode zero. So here we go. Episode one is character creation. Let's, um, where am I at? There we go. All right. So we can spin the character around. We can go. Bop, bop. You can't, it's not changing the body any. All right. So we'll go with male voice one. What brought you to Tio Stradi? What? Hello, Falcon. No, not you. Hello. No, not you. What brought you to Tio Stradi? What brought you to Tio Fradi? Hello, Falcon. I guess voice one. And we have set appearances. Okay. Definitely not. Don't think so. Maybe. I don't know. This this one looks a little wistful. This one looks a little bit angry. Eyes are slightly crossed. Uh, I'm used to playing the old guy because I am the old guy. Let's just take a look here real fast. I'm not doing this quickly. If you want to skip all of this, feel free. I feel like I should experience all of it and allow you to see all of it if you are so inclined. I think I'm back there around somewhere number three or something. Let's go back. Let's go back. Up, 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 up. Okay, so there was the, uh, that's the default. Maybe this one. That's number what, four? Okay, we're going to go with number four. I think I'm going with number four. Hello, Falcon. No, not you! Okay. Make them pay for this. Um. Ah, okay, there we go. We do have to hit click if we want to have a different skin tone. What do you think? Oh, wow, we went really dark to really light again. Well, I mean, betraying my own ancestry, I guess. Let's, um, let's go slightly. Let's go there. Let's go hair. Sure. Uh... I could live with that. We got a mullet. I'd love to have a mullet. I mean, it's kind of a mullet. It's just a business cut. Definitely not. Definitely not. I could possibly get behind it. I could almost get behind that. <laughs> Pardon me. Am I going to get facial hair? I need a beard. I am the preacher, after all. No, kind of Shogunish. Maybe not. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. I might actually like number 16. Let's take a look here at number 17. And 18, no. This is uh, Sinuous Sacrifice right there going on. Wait. Uh, 20 and 21 are just the same. Just a curl of the locks there all right we're gonna let the locks down hmm kind of like that one too and that's it okay um let me let me pick i kind of like but it's clipping through the clothing pretty badly yeah i don't i don't really like that i could live with 14. where was that's close enough to a mullet my hair does not do that or that. I don't know. This one's kind of boring. You know what? Let's go. Let's go to mullet. Mulletville. Hair color. Okay. Red. No. Do we have a white? Oh, we have gray. I mean, let's go with gray. Is that it? That's all I get. All right. Right button for next. Oh, select a character profile. The Protector, a mobile melee fighter specialized in defense and controlling the battlefield. Starting weapon, Old Stone Hatchet. Comes with the Protector's stance. Slightly increases armor and life, but reduces damage inflicted. Only one posture can be active at a time. Only one posture. Hmm. 
So you can have... Oh, okay. So if you navigate up, taunt, hurtful words, afflicts the target with a weakened effect. Okay, so you can talk trash and do some damage. Okay. Or making them weaker. Your mother was a hamster and your father smelt of elderberries. Um... All right, so, and then things are going to unlock as we proceed. Okay, I can get behind that. Let's come over here. Knockdown causes the target to fall. And violent charge. Mastery of impact weapons. Yes, I like impact weapons. So let's look at the right trigger to go to Hunter. Archers specialize in dealing negative effects. I do like archery. Depending on how it is done. Although with friendly fire, this could be this could be a problem. But uh, we're coming with taunt and hurtful words again. Double arrow fires two arrows at the target in rapid succession. A coated arrow, poison and a flaming coating to the arrow before firing. Hmm. So is it flaming poison or is it poison or flaming? That's the question I have. Inflicts damage and applies an effect depending on the arrow's coating. Power shot. All right. I like that. Who knows what we have left over? Hunter. Okay, Dunigad, 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 I don't know. Sages, specialize in versatile tier Fredian magic. Ooh, starting weapon is battle bracelets. Okay, I uh, don't know what it does, but they come with what? Grants access to skills associated with the use of bracelets and unlocks the skills Breath of Life and Toxic Bloom. Oh, Toxic Bloom, I do like the sound of that. Hmm. Bramble shackles. Brambles grow in the targeted area, preventing enemies there from moving. Really? I might want to do the magician thing here, the Donnygad. Please, somebody <laughs> try to sound out for me down in the comments how that is supposed to be pronounced. I have no, somebody will probably say it at some point. The Wild Fighter, a mobile melee fighter specializing in rage and attack. Well, you know, I specialize in rage from time to time. Roar of Death. Inflicts damage on enemies in the targeted area regardless of armor. Mastery of Impact Weapons once again. Elite Shooter. Archers specialize in dealing heavy damage at a high cost in consumables. Okay, see, I'm not a huge fan of that. Let's go back to Hunter real quick. Does it say... Now, that does not say anything about consumables but now i'm wondering if i gotta go buy arrows constantly i may not want to do that i may not want to do that tracker's bow same bow isn't it yeah tracker's bow in both cases all right the spell caster kind of like the donny gad sages specialize in tier for dn magic dealing negative effects the donny gad uh, okay this almost seems like it is a uh, the next level, or perhaps a more difficult playstyle level of the other one. Starting with the battle bracelets, negative effects, and reinforcement. Okay. Guide, mobile melee fighter, specializes in providing party-wide positive effects and controlling the battlefield. Well, I mean, that's probably going to happen anyhow. First aid, first aid could be good. Words of support applies a mighty effect to the targeted ally. Okay, we're gonna get violent charge eventually and knocked out. These look like they're still locked because they're not really highlighted. Um, this one down here, first aid is highlighted, but words of support is not. So I think that's not active right from the start. But this at least lets you know where that tree is gonna branch off. And once again, the scout is an archer. Hmm. Only posture. One posture can be active at a time. And the healer. And the free creation. No skills or attribute points are initially assigned. You can freely create your character from scratch. You know, that sounds kind of interesting. So this is the wretch class. Cooldown time, 59 seconds. Destroyers stance well i'll tell you what um this one comes with battle bracelets 
Healing Wave, and Bramble Shackles. Breath of Life and Toxic Bloom. Hmm. So there's going to be Heal. And there's going to be a lot. You know, I think that Donnie seems like a really fun play style. Let's take a look real quick at the free creation. I don't know. Um. Oh, and this says I have two available points yet to go. So I can choose protectors. Oh, I did not realize there was a bunch of left-handed stuff. Oh, okay. Let's go back here. I want to go back to the Don again. I think, okay. I wonder if I will be able to expand. I don't know. Let's do the magic user. I'm going to do that. Uh, right button for next. The Donnie God fo focuses primarily on endurance, then on focus, and finally on will. Attributes reflect a character's physical and mental skills. Strength, agility, perception, and will attributes are linked to certain weapons and provide the user with bonuses when wielding them. Endurance and focus provide health and action point bonuses, respectively. Characters must reach a certain attribute level to wield certain weapons and armors. Starts with the battle bracelets. Okay, strength of one. Okay, so it would be really cool if we could see the attributes of all of these before committing to them, right? Left button. Let's go to uh, the guide just for an example and take a look. Okay, so. All right. Can I can I make a complaint here? Spiders Incorporated. These point numbers should be visible and accessible on the last, on the prior page. They should be here. They should be on this screen. Right below the Good Samaritan stance would be a fine place to put those numbers. That way I could compare them as I want. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit frustrated by that, but let's just go on. We're going to go do Donny Get. Now, it looks like with the guide, I could have adjusted. The, okay, so I could withdraw one point of perception. Hmm. With an X, right? Yes. And that means I could improve something else. Okay, I, I can appreciate that. All right. Novice unlocks 100% of relevant equipment damage. Master ignores magic deflection. Okay. And I'm half, I, I like it five out of uh, probably 20, it looks like. All right. Endurance could be good. What if I, I'm going to take one point off of endurance. And I want to go to focus. I think. Maybe. Or agility. Or a little bit of strength. See, I still... I, hmm. One or two-handed impact or melee weapons. Hmm. Traps and pistols. And will. Increases damage inflicted by relevant equipment by 6% per level. 6% is nothing to sneeze at. Every two levels you get another point. Increases max life by 30. Oh, well, maybe I want... Another 36% of max life. Right? Maybe. Maybe. Let's do that. What could possibly go wrong? Why have you been drawing all these sketches? So that your island can be appreciated by the rest of the world. Everything is new for us here. We have so much to learn and who knows the flora of your country could very well save mine save it from this sickness you told me about the malachor yes this is what i hope in any case it's taken so many lives back home i do hope we haven't brought it here too i heard there were some sick people in the village let's talk about something else this is the big day is it not Yes, 
Today is the day Milan and I begin our initiation. Ah, I thought as much when I saw that strange woman appear in the village. Congratulations, you must... Yeah, your mother approaches and she doesn't seem too pleased. Fravidem amaralgum takasare noixe adiven. Kahole yesad kites quesa puissigach. Da regusag a nevi essa. Ad verd ole soneded. Hoi, mend minam veludet. Okay, so do I leave or stay a while with Burkhan? Well, I have choices to make. Let's stay. Tagave Takatab Garantam. Shouldn't you get going? I don't wish to be the cause of you getting in trouble with your mother. Hmm, let me ask about. Ooh. Let's ask about the nation he comes from. Tell me about your people, the lions. It is funny that you call us lions. Because that symbol actually comes from a different nation than the one I call home. The coat of arms you're familiar with belongs to the Bridge Alliance. And it uses symbols from each of the peoples that make up the Alliance. The lion is on the Mosinian coat of arms. But the Sinopole, another name for green, and the gold come from my nation, Tynia. And the Azure from Faxis. The three nations who make up the Alliance are very different. But they have a common interest in fighting the same enemies. They fight side by side, sharing ideas, research, and goods. To the outside world, they are seen as a single people. But believe me, Morsinis are nothing like the scholars of Tynia or the boyars of Thraxis. Interesting. All right. Let's go with this. What brought you to Tilfradi? It is a long story. For a time, I was no more than an armchair scientist. That's what we call naturalists and cartographers whose work is based solely on the accounts of other people. I read travel memoirs written by others and studied plants brought back from other people's travels without ever leaving the comfort of my university. I had more adventurous friends who ventured across the seas and traveled through enemy lands to bring home knowledge. But I found it inessential. I thought they were taking nonsensical and unnecessary risks. With age, I've come to the realization that I've made some terrible mistakes by relying solely on other people's experiences. So when I heard about Tiafredi, this famous promised land, I wanted to see it for myself. Hmm. All right. Um, maybe the Malachor. What's so special about the illness you told me about? It's a disease we didn't know anything about. It wasn't mentioned in any of our ancient books. Seemingly overnight, hundreds of people all over the continent were stricken. Then thousands. All those who catch it lose their eyesight. Then their blood becomes black and thick. Eventually, they have to be locked up because they go mad and become violent. And then they die. In some cities, entire neighborhoods have been deserted with the doors boarded up from the outside. Everyone has lost at least one relative. We must find a cure, or our civilizations will disappear. Hmm. Okay. Let's go ahead and... You mentioned your country, Tuania. What can you tell me about it? Compared to your island, it is a dry country with no large forests like you have here. But our stone is rich in minerals. We have sprawling beautiful cities, as well as small fishing, mining, farming villages. Above all, it is a land of scholars where science is celebrated and honored. It is governed by an assembly of wise men we call Sophaks, who are elected by each region for their great knowledge. I could explain our political system in detail, but frankly, it's rather complex and very different from yours. You mentioned another people of the Alliance. Thraxis? Thraxis is a vast territory that became a nation fairly recently. My country even tried to conquer it at one point. It must be said that for centuries, 
Their chiefs did nothing but fight amongst themselves. Actually, it was the attack by my nation that pushed them to rally against a common enemy and ultimately forged them into a nation. They are formidable horsemen, and their cavalry is a major asset in the war against Aleme and the Empire. They are coarse and unscientific, but without them, we'd probably have ended up bending the knee to our enemies. So we have the Scholar class, the Soldier class, and... What is Morsinia? It is an ancient island nation to the far north of the continent. With a climate similar to yours, they are more isolated and protected from the Empire and Teleme, though part of their population adheres to a similar religion. However, they decided to join the Alliance to safeguard their independence and religious difference from their neighbors' proselytizing zeal. They are normally ruled by a queen, but they have an assembly of nobles and representatives of cities who advise her and make the laws. They are a refined, cultured people, and their science is admirable. But they're rather haughty. Okay. Uh, are there other nations to be concerned about? Did you say there were other people on your island? Yes. There are actually other nations, in fact. I think I've already told you that we don't come from an island, but a continent. A vast land. Teleme is located to the west. You may have come across missionaries from this country. They have also settled on Tiafredin. They believe in religion and magic, and want to convert the world to their narrow vision of things. I must admit that they have remarkable architecture, but we've been at war with them for over three centuries. To the south is the Merchant Congregation, a league of city-states whose power lies in their talent for trade. They are skillful diplomats and have made their neutrality an undeniable strength. They too have recently settled on your island. If you see elegant dandies dressed in silk who want to trade you something, you're definitely dealing with someone from the congregation. The Dutan Empire <laughs> is situated between Teleme and our alliance. It is a huge land, and we are also at war with them. Their country is being torn apart by civil war, which is most likely the reason they haven't attempted to settle here yet. Finally, the free cities are in the very middle. They are a relatively young nation, perched high in the mountains. They have just won their independence from the Empire. Most of the mercenaries in the Coin Guard come from this country. Okay, well, I think I've learned everything I want to. Let's go back and leave. I should go now. Yes, I wouldn't want Minan to regret letting me stay here. Come and see me again when you can. Okay, that was quite the lore dump. Uh, journal updated. We can open the menu. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. Okay. Donegad's initiation. There we go. I should not keep him waiting. Okay. Ooh, let's go examine the little standing stone here. Oh. Well, that's all fine and good. I just wanted to look at the sleeping... Lizard thing. Okay. Well, I guess we are going this way. And let's jump up. Oh, come on. Um, 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 okay, so I can't jump. Okay. Well, it's going to lock us into going this direction. Now, granted, this is the tutorial section, so that means that we are not going to have much chance. Okay, see, there's another lizard there. So they got these great big lizards blocking all of the paths. So let's take a look at him. Whoop. All right, skip that. I just wanted to look at the lizard. Can I not look at the lizard? I want to, but I, I guess I'll do it later. All right. Uh, cannot climb over rocks either. Oh boy. I really hope that I get a jump pretty soon that's going to enable me to go over some basic rocks. Or I am going to not find that to be the most fun thing ever. Okay, so what's up here? We have a, a magical doodad. New area, Vigeshvar. Can I 
A does nothing, X does nothing, B does nothing, Y does nothing. Okay. Oh. So right trigger goes to the pause, left trigger, nothing. Or a uh, right button, rather. Left trigger, right trigger, nothing. Okay. Well, um I guess we're going. Quite the download dump. Oh, looky here. We get a lizard. Let's walk over here and talk a take a look at him. He's cool. Looks beefy. Looks pretty significant. Oh, uh, gazoon tight. Looks like this dude sneezed. Okay. So am I going to go talk to them? Hit Y to speak to... Oh, I got to hold Y. Ask her about... Um, oh gosh, I really don't want another download. Let's go ahead. Mm. Alright, let's get out of here. I, I don't want to have endless endless data dumps, and it feels like that's what's happening here. Alright. Now, um, movement, left stick, right stick, and close that. Okay. Alright, now we've created our character. Um, Can I? Oh, I gotta press and hold close. Oh, I am not going to like that. I tell you what, we've done Character creation. It's we'll get on and do. Ooh, that's kind of pretty. We'll get on and do the rest of this the next time. I want to actually get into the gameplay, so that is something that we will do right now. We've started the game out. We're taking a look, got the character creation, and we'll do the rest of it the next time. Thank you for joining me. I will see you, and I don't even know what I can do other than 